and welcome back to Life University Angels 411 podcast series. Today we're going to talk about the hierarchies of the angels and see a little bit about what they actually look like or what they portray themselves as. Again, they're not there to scare us, they're there to help us. But this is something that um, I, I don't believe in my own opinion that they um, portray themselves as this, as as they truly are. But this would be like their true um, appearance, you know, in the, in the other realms or the heavenly realms. Um, we may be able to speak directly to God through prayer, but according to the Bible, he created a variety of angels that each hold unique duties. There's nine types of angels within three major groups. They're known as the choirs. And I'm sure if, if you're familiar with angels, then you heard of the choirs of the angels. But regardless of where they are on the hierarchy, they're individuals just like we are. They're extremely forgiving and patient for the fact that they can see far beyond a mortal time. They are assigned to, to assist us in reaching our true life's purpose. We're all assigned angels and guides that help us throughout our journey. But like I said before, angels can never interfere with our human free will. Angelology describes the angelic hierarchy as the following within their rankings. Okay, we're going to start with the seraphim, which is a rank one. These are the angels that are closest to God. They encircle his throne and emit an intense fiery light representing his love. Seraphim are considered fiery serpents and not even the other divine beings may look at them. There's only four of them and each have four faces and six wings. When they come to earth, they leave their serpent appearance behind, preferring tall and clean cut human embodiments. So I find that really interesting that they, you know, that they actually look like that. Usually the four faces, I believe, are a bull, an eagle, a human, and a lion. So uh, that would be the four faces that they hold within the heavenly realms. But when they come to earth, they, they, I call it a meat suit, you know, because it's the human embodiment. So I thought that was pretty cool. Cherubim. Cherubim is the plural of cherubs. They are also rank one. Um, cherubim are usually portrayed as uh, like the little babies with the little arrows and the hearts. Uh, these angels are the keepers of celestial records and hold the knowledge of God. They are sent to earth with great tasks such as expelling humankind from the Garden of Eden. Ancient art depicts cherubim as sphinx-like winged creatures with human faces. Ophaniel, Rickbiel, and Zophiel are cherubim, as was Satan before his fall to evil. So Lucifer was actually a cherubim. Go figure. He's, you know, it, picture of Lucifer with a little bow and arrow with some hearts coming out. I don't know about that. Okay, thrones. They are also the rank and rank one. Thrones, their appearance is said to be the most unusual of the first grouping. They're said to look like great glowing wheels covered with many eyes. They serve as God's chariot and dispense his judgment in order to carry out his desires for us. The angels in the second choir can exist in a state of transition between the celestial and human worlds. They're considered heavenly governors, attempting to strike a balance between matter and spirit, which is good and bad. Under the highest angelic forms lay the middle angels. Let's move on to dominions or dominations, which are the rank two. Think of the dominions as middle management. They receive orders from seraphim and cherubim, then dish out duties to the worker bee angels of the lower orders. Their main purpose is to make sure that the cosmos remain in order. Hashmal is the chief of this order. Virtues, also known as the authorities, which is another rank too. Shaped like sparks of light, Virtues are in charge of maintaining the natural world, and they inspire living things in areas such as science. 
They also take orders from the angels above and convert them into miracles for the deserving. When they make themselves known to us in their earthly form, they're normally musicians, artists, healers, and scientists who work with the power of love as well as physics. The two angels at the ascension of Jesus are believed to be virtu have been virtues. Then we move on to powers, which is another rank two. In their celestial form, powers appear like brightly colored ha hazy fumes. Powers are border patrol agents between heaven and earth. They are the angels of birth and the angels of death. Some believe that they also preside over demons who wish to overthrow the world, while others, namely St. Paul, thought the powers themselves were the evil, evil ones. In any case, powers are a group of experts who serve as advisors in terms of religion, theology, and ideology. Now we're going to move on to the third ranking, which starts with the principalities. These angelic beings are shaped like rays of light, just like a principal in the school. It's the principalities who oversee everything. They guide our entire world, including nations, cities, and towns. Once more, they're in charge of religion and politics. As if their plate isn't full enough, they're also in charge of managing the earthly duties of the angels below them. Now we get to the ones that we're most familiar with, which are archangels and angels. So archangels is also rank three. Archangels, along with the angels, are guardians of people and all things physical. They're the first order of angels that appeared in human form. As such, they function among us as pioneers for change in the form of explorers, philosophers, and human right leaders. These, this order is most commonly known because they're mentioned by, the, by name in the Bible. Just to name a few, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel. Um, then we're going to move on to the angels. Angels are the true intermediaries between God and individual people. Angels don't watch over nations. They safeguard households and individuals who believe in God and keep them safe from demons. They nurture, counsel, and heal. We all have a personal angel, better known as our guardian angel that stays with us daily. Angels are non-denominational beings. They come to anyone regardless of their religion, race, or color. I'd like to share a short story to end this podcast um, that my mom uh, told me not too long ago that pertains to angels. The mother of a friend was in her last stages of life. She told her daughter that angels are there, but she can't talk to them. The daughter asked why her mother could not speak with the angels, and she said, because they do not have a face. I believe that the angels were there with this person waiting to take her home. I thought that was pretty cool because of the fact that it kind of portrays what angels may look like, you know, and, and uh, although they may not have a face in the other world, they always show us a face here. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And I will talk to you real soon. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at www.lifeu.me. This is Lisa Moria. Namaste.